Hello and welcome to Spindle TV. My name is Lanny Shaughnessy. I'm going to be your host tonight and I'm jumping in a little bit early uh, to just uh, say hi. Didn't get to see you guys Tuesday. Tuesday I got tied up with uh, Digital Woodcarver Business and Customers and uh, I didn't get a project or anything ready. I uh, didn't have anything planned uh, and it was all kind of last minute. So we had to move to tonight. So thanks for joining me. I greatly appreciate that. Um, the uh, questions are already rolling in in the chat, which is great. Uh, we'll answer some of those. Um, and uh, if you have questions, throw a question mark in front of the question or something, you know, so I know uh, that it's a question for me. All right. Um, let's start off with a pretty uh, simple question uh, here as we're just kind of uh, getting letting everybody get in it's not 715 just yet but um, uh, Brooks Martin asked uh, what I think of uh, Matt uh, Lugavere uh, and uh, I believe I I believe I pronounced his last name right he's an American author has a podcast uh, mostly cookbooks and everything I don't follow his content so um, I'm not sure where that question comes from Brooks but uh, is there something I should be watching with regards to him? Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, I've never seen his podcast. I've never read any of his books. Uh, and uh, so I, I, I don't think of him in any way because I don't know who he is as far as that goes. I just know that uh, he's got some cookbooks out, got a podcast out, uh, and that's about it. So... If there's something that I'm supposed to uh, possibly know about them or whatever, let me know. Let me know. All right. <clears throat> cool beans. Okay. So we're going to jump right in here and uh, kind of get the ball rolling with some of these questions. Uh, Harvey asked, uh, uh, what is the vector selector? And uh, what does the associate with Toolpath do? An example would be nice. So that would be a great uh, first example to show you all. And um, we'll go ahead and do that. So let's jump over to the Vectric software. I believe I am on channel three or camera three is Vectric. And let me get down in the, my position down here in the lower left corner. Wonderful. All right, got to fix my lighting at some point. So the uh, shadows will somewhat disappear. My halo lighting and stuff but okay all right not too shabby there's still a little bit of shadowing going on when i rock back but that's okay all right let's see here so basically especially when we're doing a project like a text on text or something um let's say that i have uh multiple layers here and let's say on layer one i've got these stars and let me actually let me do this uh, let me get rid of that one and let me mirror this one I'm gonna flip it about the job center horizontally over there wonderful and I want to take and center both of those up and down perfect all right and on layer two, we'll turn off layer one for a minute. On layer two, uh, we're gonna do some text. And we'll just go, uh, welcome home. And let's get that centered on the board. I'm gonna stretch it out a bit. All right, and so imagine if you will, and let me take uh, welcome home here. Let me weld it together, I'm replacing it. There we go. All right, so imagine if you will, I have uh, you know these items on these different layers and everything. 
Um, when I uh, come in to create a toolpath, let's say a VCAR toolpath, um, I can go ahead and use my vector selection. Instead of manually clicking on this star and holding down my shift key and clicking on this star and then calculating the toolpath on those manually selected vectors, I can just use the vector selector and I could say, okay, what type of vectors uh, do I want to select? I want to select all the open vectors and the closed, you know, any straight lines and things like that are open vectors. Uh, closed vectors are my stars and whatever. Um, so uh, I want to associate them with this toolpath, meaning this layer, whatever I put on this layer, when I calculate or recalculate this particular toolpath here, that everything on that layer is going to get calculated with that toolpath. So if I say, okay, associate with the toolpath layer one. So you'll notice my stars automatically got selected here. And so when I close this, now it'll say automatic down here. And I'll calculate that, <clears throat> you know. Now, let's say that I go back and I change. Let's go over and get layer one active here. And uh, I come in and I start, let's draw a line here. I'm going to use the alignment tool and get it centered up. Let's get it centered up right there. And I'm going to mirror it to the other side vertically. Okay. And I come back in here and I recalculate this toolpath. Now I do not have to go over there and select everything. I just got to recalculate the toolpath because layer one is associated with that toolpath. So now, you know, when I preview this, I can preview that visible toolpath and those new elements that I added to that layer, they're associated with that toolpath. So they're automatically going to get calculated. So that's what associate with toolpath does. It associates that layer with that toolpath, whatever vectors are on that layer are going to get calculated with that particular toolpath. Uh, I hope that Harvey, uh, I hope that answered your question. Okay. Um, I hope that answered your question. So let's, uh, come in here and let's, uh, create another V carve toolpath and, uh, let's associate this one with everything that is on layer two and calculate that and we can preview that as well <clears throat> right okay cool enough so that's what it does it just basically you know associates it with the toolpath and uh, whatever changes and, and things that I make to that toolpath when I recalculate it's gonna pick up those changes or whatever new vectors are on there or, or what have you Okay, that way I'm not sitting there manually having to select this, 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 and this, and then calculate, you know, it does it automatically. All right, cool. So that answers that, and hopefully it was a good enough answer for you, uh, Brooks, or I'm sorry, Harvey. Uh, hopefully it was a good enough answer for you and you, and you understand it now. Um, ta -dum, ta -dum. Let's see here. And welcome to everybody. Thanks for coming out on a Thursday night. I know it's kind of like towards the end of the week and, you know, it's kind of an odd night, you know, enough uh, and all for us to be here. But thanks. I appreciate that. Uh, let's see. I know I just saw Brooks. Oh yeah, uh, so you just got his book, Genius Kitchen. No, unfortunately, I don't know of his work. Now, my uh, mother has a cooking channel on Facebook, a real popular uh, cooking channel on Facebook uh, with recipes and everything. She might know his work, but uh, I, unfortunately, I don't. I don't know his work uh, and everything. Um, the uh, uh, but 
I love a good cookbook now. I might have to look into it and uh, see what it's all about. Let's see here. Ronnie says, uh, Laney, what was the name of that font? So that particular font for the Welcome Home is called uh, Grand Adventure. Grand Adventure. You can find it on dafont.com. Grand Adventure. That's the font. Grand Adventure. And you can find it on dafont.com. D-A-F-O-N-T dot com. Uh, let's see here. Um, cool beans. Now, if y'all have any questions or anything, please uh, feel free to uh, ask those questions. Uh, ask your questions and everything. I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, let me give you a quick little uh, update or a little rundown. Uh, the Beehive Project uh, that we did last week, I believe. Um, I'm actually going to be making the parts and uh, doing some carving and everything on them tomorrow and the next day. Once I kind of make sure everything is good and golden and all that stuff, uh, I will be putting the files uh, in a digital download uh, link in the description of that class video. Uh, that you guys can download and play around with and stuff or what have you. But I want to run a test. I want to make sure everything is good. Uh, I want to do both versions of where uh, the finger joints would be carved at the end of the table, also where they would be carved on the table. And so I just want to make sure everything is good there. Uh, my new bits, I got some eighth inch uh, end mills uh, that uh, just came in. And so I'm going to be running those tests. And once I know everything is good, I will uh, post those files for those of you that were curious about or wanted them. I know somebody emailed me and asked, or somebody commented and asked if I was going to put the files up uh, and make them available, and yes, I am. So they'll be available probably over the weekend. Uh, they'll be in the description. The download link will be in the description of that and all. Um, now, the... Uh, Cool, man. Um, are we live in? We are live, Harvey, already. So we've been we've been live ever since I've been talking for the last twelve minutes and forty eight seconds. We have been live. Um, so uh, we're live. And uh, all right, let's see here. What can I talk to you guys and girls about tonight while we're waiting for your questions and everything to come up? Uh, let's delete all of those. And I'm going to uh, create a new project file. And I'm going to bring in a STL model. We're going to kind of, uh, for those that might be new and not sure how to bring in or import STL models, I'm going to do that uh, because there's a model I want to look at that I have that I'm about to put out available on the website. I've got some new clock models uh, and new picture frame models um, and some new flag models. So... Uh, I want to bring one of them in. Uh, so we're going to go, I'm going to go 30, uh, let's see, this clock here. I'm going to go 24 by 24 just for right now. I'll size it down normal in a moment. And I think I'm going to go one and a half inches thick. It's got a nice body on the clock. Uh, and I'm going to be zeroing out on the material surface because I'll have some plenty of area. Uh, to zero it on that, that I haven't, uh, that I'm not, that's not going to be carved. And I'm going to start off on the bottom left corner. Um, my resolution is set to very high. It's good. These models are high resolution, so I don't need to make it extremely high or anything like that. Uh, very high is, it will be good enough. And let's click OK. So again, if you have questions about anything, Brooks Martin keeps asking about the Hulk. Uh, yeah, I've got to, I've got to really do that one, huh? Uh, the three dimensional Hulk with slicing and everything. Um, I really need to do that one. 
I promise. Uh, uh, let me, let me, uh, let me, uh, I'll work on that this coming week and, uh, you know, see what I can do with it and stuff. And then I'll, uh, I'll, uh, that'll be one of our classes. We'll do a, well, it'll take a multi-series class cause it'll be on importing, uh, positioning and, uh, and everything. So yeah. Yep. I've got to look at that cause it's going to have to be sliced in multiple different directions and all. So yeah, I'll do that. You keep asking about that. Um, let's see here. Day, uh, Kool-Aid says, how do you add a picture to view as a project? Now, Kool-Aid, are you referring to um, a like a picture of a, a species of wood that we can carve in? Uh, are you referring to a background that we can take our preview carving uh, and kind of uh, put it in the background of our screen? Is that what you mean by how do you add a picture to view as a project? Um, if you're talking about like if I have a picture of a piece of cedar, how do I import it in here and carve my design on it so it looks like it's carved on that cedar board type of thing? Let me know if um, that's what you're referring to and I'll show that. Um, all right, let's go to our modeling tab while uh, Kool-Aid's kind of uh, gonna, he's gonna give me a little bit uh, better explanation of what he's asking and then uh, we'll, we'll, we'll answer his question. But let's import an image. Not, I'm sorry, not an image, a model. And um, on our models, I'm going to, uh, got uh, so many of them floating around here. Let's go into, do, do, do. Uh, I actually got to see, I should have been a little bit more prepared to see what folder it was. Um, it's not that one, I believe. It is. That's the angel, the Ford, the chess, dragon. That's my watch face. Badges, bear with me. They are hiding from me at the moment. There's the Veterans Eagle, uh, USA flag, truck, donkey and hat, coat of arms. Which one are you? That's also the coat of arms. I believe this is it right here. Um, nope, that's not it. I'll get it, guys and girls. Hold on a second. It pulls up weird uh, when I'm when I'm opening it through Vetric. Uh, let's just do this. Uh, clocks, C L O C K, clock, and that should pull up this folder. Wonderful. All right, so let me go outside of Vetric. When you can't find the folders that you want, go the other route. Let's go here. I know exactly where they are in this formation. It looks weird. It's like, man, you got a lot of stuff going on there. But in this formation, you know, I know pretty much uh, what's what and who's who and, uh, and everything. And so the... Um, uh, what am I trying to say? Uh, the confusion won't. Uh, that's the world clock. 
That one's a good one, but it's not the one that I want. Let's see here. All right, I'm not lying to myself. I promise I'm not lying to myself. That's my coins, skulls. Come on, Lenny. You're holding up the progress of life here. Let's just grab this. Okay. Um, I got some new flags. I got some new Punisher flags and Canadian flags coming up. But that's not what I want. Let's go clocks. Lord of mercy, Lenny. Come on now. Clock. And... This is what I want. So I want to go to open file location. Wonderful. All right, here we go. View, medium, let's go large icons. Okay, uh, let's go extra large icons so everybody can see. Wonderful. Uh, got some new clock models and the one I want right here is number five. Number five and it's in the um, 103182. Let me write that number down. I'll forget it. My folder. So clock 1 through 40. Clock 1 through 40. And it's uh, 31832. 31832. So many models that I've got to add on the website, ladies and gentlemen. All right, let's go ahead and get to it. Um, back up, go clocks, back up, I will get it, I will get it, I will get it, wonderful. 1 through 40. And I need I need number 5 now. Come on. Oh, are they still zipped? Shoot. That's why. I'm sorry, guys. I I'm, I'm an idiot. I zipped them all the other day so I could put them on the website and Vetric won't pull it up if it's zipped. Let me go through and fix that. Clock. Come on. Uh, open file location number five let's copy this and just put it where I can find it easily copy downloads paste and extract Sorry, see what happens when you try to do things live? Uh, that'll give you plenty of time to ask questions. And there's lots of questions rolling in. Wonderful. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, get this up here real quick. There's number five. And let that settle in and import while we are answering some questions. All right, sorry about that. That took a while. That was crazy in itself. Um, but uh, let's see what we've got here. Um, <clears throat> I believe in our tools, there is a tool called PhotoCarve. Would you show us how it uh, to use it, please? Yeah, Ronnie, we can do that. Um, how do you cut and paste the path? How do you cut and paste the path? Um, Brooks Martin, what do you mean the path of what? To a file? How do you cut and paste the path to a file? Let me know what you mean by uh, how do you cut and paste a path? Okay. All right, so when we bring in a model, we have to uh, orientate it. Uh, in this case, I need to, I'm in a top orientation, which is what I want. 
for this, but I need to size this down. I'm gonna scale it from its millimeter size to inches by clicking on scale from metric to inches. Uh, and then I'm going to uh, size it up appropriately for me. I want it to be about 20 inches. And uh, I'm gonna click apply. And then I'm going to center that onto the material. And then I'm gonna go ahead and go to position and import. Let me get this in and then we'll go over your questions, guys and girls. Uh, on the position and import, I wanna bring the zero plane to the bottom of the model. So the model's sitting on top of the zero plane. It's a one-sided project. And uh, I wanna go ahead and um, uh, import that in. I want to turn off create both sides. I want to import that in. And <clears throat> that will be the clock body to start off with. But before we go any further with that clock body, let's go ahead and answer uh, your questions. So, um, Let's first of all, let's see if Kool-Aid came back with uh, the picture question. Uh, Kool-Aid, um, yes, if you have a different kind of wood or a decal and you have a picture of that uh, and you want to view it on your project to see what it would look like. So here's uh, basically what I'm assuming that you're saying, uh, Kool-Aid, and tell me if I'm wrong. But uh, let's say that I go into my preview window here, okay? And I want to change my species of wood, but I wanna import a picture of, of wood that I have. Um, I can add a new texture here. Uh, and the texture that uh, I use and uh, let me just type in walnut up here, walnut. If I import that image, I can you know, create that background and then whatever carving I do, uh, let's say that I have a profile cut um, let me fix this real quick. Otherwise it won't let me create my tool path. We'll get back to that in a minute. Right now I'm not doing anything with the model. I'm just going to profile cut this circle. And, um, you know, when I, you know, cut this, I can preview it in that cut on that, you know, piece of that walnut background that I brought in. Now that's what I'm assuming that you're referring to. Um, other than that, I, uh, I'm not sure what, uh, you know, if I bring in somebody's decal or something like that, um, it's, I can't just, you know, view it in here uh, uh, in the preview area, uh, like a carving and stuff, because it, I can't create a toolpath or anything on that type of image. But if I'm wanting to fill my block with this wood grain, or it could be the whole decal, you know, might be something whatever, um, uh, I could do that. But uh, you know, let me know if that's kind of what you're uh, uh, what you're asking and stuff. All right, let's go back to um, let's go back to uh, Ronnie real quick. Uh, he was asking, and let me turn off in the modeling tab. I'm going to turn off this model just for a minute. He was asking about the uh, photo V carve. Now, photo V carve basically is just a way that we can take a photo in a V bit and we can do a type of carving with it. Uh, to be honest, I'm not thrilled with the way it looks, the results of it and everything like that. So I never use it. Uh, but Ronnie, um, basically it allows you to import a, an image, 
Uh, let's go ahead and we'll import an image uh, here. And uh, let's size this image up. Okay, so here's yours truly. And um, in the photo V carve, um, I'm gonna have a start depth of zero, maximum cut depth, I would probably go point um, 0.015, uh, step over, retract, um, how, when I'm retracting to step over from one line to another, it doesn't need to retract very high, kind of minimize, I'll go a 16th of an inch. Uh, I will use a 60 degree V bit uh, and I want to do a raster cut and I'm going to go a 45 degree angle on this raster cut and the line spacing I want it to be very dense uh, and um, you know as dense as possible so I get multiple lines uh, and uh, clean that up so let's go ahead and calculate that and <clears throat> Let's reset that. Now I'm gonna change my wood species back to uh, something that's a little bit clearer to see uh, and everything. And uh, when we preview uh, the toolpath here, okay, uh, the preview is pretty much uh, non-existent until I add some color you know, to it. Uh, and my lines, let's see here. Let's see if we can tighten that up a lot more. Let's change this. Uh, I want to be line spacing. I want to take that to an extreme. I want to go 10% spacing. Calculate that again. Uh, yeah, we'll start off with 10% spacing. Uh, 100 was just too, it was too dense. Uh, or it, it was just too spaced apart still. So we'll uh, let that, that's going to take some time to calculate. And we'll let that calculate. We'll let that stew for a minute. We'll open up a new window so we can answer the other questions while that's calculating. Um, the line spacing, I mean, it was just too spread out. You know, you couldn't see any detail in the, in the, in the image at all. Um, and so uh, we're, we're reducing that line spacing uh, and, uh, you know, if I go sparse, I'm, I'm spacing four up to 400% apart. If I go dense, I'm about a hundred percent apart, which is basically almost kind of like the width of my bit in a sense. Uh, and I'll, so I'm actually going much tighter, 10% apart these lines and stuff. We'll see how that goes there. Um, and everything. Uh, uh, so we'll let that calculate it let me see here is it even gonna move bear with me a second I might have rocked the system on that one <laughs> that calculation bar is like not moving. It's thinking really, 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 really hard. Um, let me see if I can. We'll get that to. Uh, we'll get that uh, to uh, concentrate here in a minute. Let me. That was a big because uh, this is 24 inches by 24 inches, right? So let me let me bring this down in size just a little bit so it's not so like 
crazily tight. So I'm going to go uh, an a 8 by 10 photo. Uh, 8 by 10. And uh, inch and a half thick is fine. Let's click OK. Let's come back over here and import that image again. On a more, I sized that thing up too. I forgot I sized it up to like a 24 by 24. So super dense. Um, let's size this up. And no, Baron, I'm not showing all my muscles. It just happens to be the photo that was in the thumbnail tonight. So it'll work. All right. So we're going to do a photo V carve. Uh, same parameters and everything here. Uh, the line spacing, I'm going to bring this down to, I'm actually, let, let, we'll bring it, uh, I'll, I'll go 40% uh, to start off with, so it's not so extravagant. Uh, we'll calculate that, and we'll let that process much better, <laughs> much faster. Uh, and uh, if we preview that, okay, we can start to see the uh, the detail come in, you know, a little bit uh, better. Let's see if we can lighten that up a little. Um, you know, as we bring that denseness in, and and all. So basically, the photo V carve uh, takes a V bit and it slices a series of lines. And the deeper and the wider the lines are. That's the dark areas of the photo. The thin, narrow lines are the lighter areas of the photo. Um, and you have to add some kind of contrasting color, some kind of dye, some kind of stain, some kind of what have you to really get a good result. And you really need to clean the image. So after you carve it, uh, after you run the carving and everything, you really need to go through and, and clean out the little grooves, uh, get a little uh, X-Acto knife, some sanding, uh, light sanding, get it, 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 any fuzzies. I mean, just eliminate everything that could just be a problem uh, and really, really clean it up. Uh, from there, you want to paint uh, at different angles. So your first and light, multiple light coats, not one big heavy coat or anything like that, just multiple light coats. Uh, but you might go uh, with the grooves, uh, you know, for the first pass, uh, you know, on the first coat, and then go against the grooves kind of on the second coat. Uh, and then once that's all said and done, then you're going to sand it back again uh, with a, you know, maybe a 220 sandpaper. And uh, uh, you know, that's when the image starts to really reveal itself. Now, online, <clears throat> online, there is an excellent uh, video on photo V carving uh, on YouTube. And I, unfortunately, it's sad. I don't, right off the top of my head, I don't know the name. Uh, of the person doing it, but uh, I recommend this video all the time, man. Uh, but uh, let me get down to it right here. Uh, yeah, cutting it loose, uh, or cutting it close. I, I knew it was, I, I could have figured it was that. But the uh, thumbnail has John Wayne in here. Now, cutting it close did a great job explaining. He Now, uh, he's running uh, on a Laguna. I, I don't know if it's the ICQ or not, but... He's running on a large machine, but he does a great job of explaining the process and, and, and the trials and tribulations and everything that went through. Uh, really good video. Uh, he did one, he kind of followed up with a second video uh, doing epoxy art, you know, and he did uh, in that. But the John Wayne, you'll see the thumbnail, uh, carving a photo in wood, how to finish, right? You know, how to finish the photo engraving. It's all about the finish. So. I would recommend watching that uh, 10 minute video, listening to him. He talks a lot in it and everything and just kind of explains the thought process, the trials, the this and that, uh, but he shows, you know, all the work and the finished result is phenomenal. Um, and, you know, so you, you really need dense lines to, to really kind of bring things out, but you also got to really clean it up get it 
I mean, really clean it up before you paint it and then, you know, get that color, that dye or whatever in, uh, and then, uh, clean it up again to really make the, make the image pop and all. So, okay. That would be that. Uh, let me get, uh, back here. Um, this one actually calculated too. Now this one was at a 10% density, right? Uh, so let's uh, preview that visible toolpath. This was a big one, right? 10% uh, density and it would help if I, um, uh, let's reset that preview and preview that. Oops, let's preview that again. So this was even tighter on the lines uh, and uh, everything. Um, and so, you know, actually not uh, the forty percent density actually looks better than the ten percent density. So this was at ten percent density, forty-five degree angle, right? Uh, much larger scale, you know, uh, versus this one, right? So that's. 40% density, so maybe the perfect look might be somewhere in the middle, right? So it's a little bit of trial and error. And, uh, you know, this one's a little dark in the face, right? A little deep, a little dense, a little dark in the face there. The other one is um, a little bit light. So maybe somewhere in the middle. Right, maybe somewhere in the middle, uh, and all would would be the way to go with that. But that's how you use the photo V carve. I honestly, I've done one photo V carve in seven years. You know, uh, if I'm gonna do something, I'll do it as a 3D model. You know, when it comes to an image or something like that, or I'll laser engrave it. I really like the way a laser engraved photo looks and stuff. Um, the photo V carve, you've got to, it's all about the finish, the cleaning and the finish. If you can nail that, then you're, you're golden, right? So, um, for me, I just, you know, I was never really pleased with the results that I got, uh, and stuff. So I just kind of never did it. You know, I did the one and, uh, I tried it a couple of the same image, you know, a couple of times and it might've been the cherry wood that I was using you know, that uh, threw it off. But I tried everything and it just, I couldn't get it to look the way they look. But cutting it close, his John Wayne, phenomenal. Watch that video, listen to what he says, follow that and you'll be good to go. All right, so let's go ahead and close out of that. Um, let me see, is this one has my model in it? All right, so let's not close out of that one. Let's close out of the other one. Don't save the changes. Uh, let's get rid of the image here. Now, now that I brought this model in, uh, one of the things that you saw when I went to create that circular sample toolpath, uh, you know, for Kool-Aid and stuff, was that it threw me into the material setup, uh, and I had an error. My model was, uh, it was too big for my material. When I imported it in, it was like two inches thick. Uh, so I had to size it down uh, to kind of fit in my material and everything. Otherwise it wouldn't, you know, it was just, it threw up an error. It wasn't gonna let me create the toolpath on it. So what I've done is I've reduced, uh, let me get, uh, let me uh, reset this and close that. Um, I've reduced the size or the thickness down uh, to an inch and three eighths. Gave me about uh, an eighth of an inch of material for my inch and a half material. And it's on the back end, you know, it's on the back side and all. But um, uh, the model here, little pixelated, uh, to tell you the truth, um, even though I'm in a, you know, fairly high resolution, uh, the model's resolution, um, the model's resolution, I can't increase that. I can't, I can't make it any better than what it was created in and stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it carves nice, uh, but there's pixelation in here. And so, uh, 
you've got to use a really, you know, a sixteenth of an inch diameter bit ball nose or, uh, you know, a combination of a sixteenth and a thirty second to really get, you know, the best detail that you can. It actually doesn't carve too, too bad, uh, but um, it, uh, in the preview here, my little preview window, uh, it's, it's a bit, you know, pixelated. And that pixelation does translate over to the quality of the finished cut and all. But this is one of my models that I, that's going on the website to sell. Uh, and, um, you know, it's, uh, it's good for what it is. It is good. It's a good model, but it's, it's pixelated. It's, it could be a higher resolution. But I can't go back and have the artist recreate the, you know, 200 different models that they've created over the years uh, and stuff. Um, it just is what it is. So they won't be high priced when they go up for sale and things like that, you know, but, uh, we've imported it in, uh, and, uh, all looks good. My thickness is good. My position model position and the material is good here. Uh, I am going to add a little 10 thousandths of an inch skin to the top of the model because I have contours and curves and I want to make sure that, uh, I don't get any flat spots. So that little 10 thousandths of an inch, you can go more, but 10 thousandths is good enough for me. And I want to create my 3D rough cut here. Uh, and my rough cut's gonna use my quarter inch end mill. I'm going to, since I'm cutting this out, let's go ahead and create a boundary around it. Uh, and I'm going to use the boundary as my vector, my selected vector to carve. You know, I could use the model as the boundary as well, kind of six and one half dozen the other, but I'll use the, uh, you know, the selected vectors fine. And, uh, my quarter inch end mill is going to go in and kind of rough cut, uh, you know, this up and everything. Now, um, the... thing that uh, I said earlier when I began this, I said it was a single sided job. Uh, it actually is not. It's a, it is a technically could be a two sided job because you've got the pocket on the back uh, where the clock mechanism is going to go that you're going to be pocketing out uh, in stuff. And um, so uh, therefore it would be kind of set up as a two sided job. So I was a little wrong on that one, but we'll, um, We'll, uh, we'll rock that uh, here in just a second. But let's let's preview that and then we'll go on to our next question because I'm just going to kind of proceed through this slowly as we go and just answer questions and everything. All right, so let's turn off the color. We don't need that on. And this is just a rough cut. So this just goes through and hogs away all the waste material uh, and uh, just a nice Z-level rough cut. Okay. What I mean by that is uh, Z level on the raster roughing strategy, okay? Uh, and uh, Z level. So I'm not a big fan of the 3D raster, so I'll never teach that method. All right, let's go back uh, and um, let's see here. Brooks, uh, going back to Brooks' question. Uh, said, yeah, uh, Laney, sorry, couldn't have, uh, couldn't you have copied the path of the clocks file, uh, and then import it of the STL based on that path? Um, I probably could have, uh, let's see. I could have went to here. I could have went to downloads. I could have uh, searched clocks and uh, let me get rid of the S there, clock. I could have uh, come in and opened that particular file's location. Uh, now, this is a zip file. I can't import. This is not a model. This is a preview image of, of the clocks uh, and stuff. Uh, so this is just the preview image. And the, um, uh, the model itself is actually zipped. So I would have to unzip it. 
So let's just extract it here. Okay, and then, you know, I could, uh, you know, here, I could come up, oops, hold on a minute. Uh, I could, you know, pretty much copy this path. And in the Vetric software, when I'm importing the model, I could have pasted that path there and found that clock and then, you know, imported it in. Now, it's not gonna, it shouldn't let me, cause I'm in VCAR Pro, it shouldn't let me import it in. Uh, I can only import one model at a time. Um, yeah, that's what I thought. But yeah, I could have done that. If that's what you're referring to, Brooks, I could have copied and pasted it and found it much quicker like that, no problem. Uh, I was just uh, not thinking. I, I was being a goofball and uh, not thinking properly. All right, let's see here. Um, let's see. Baron says, uh, using your pre-existing dragon clock to remove the surrounding dragons and just keep the clock. Uh, how to remove the rest? So, well, number one, the uh, dragons here are, they overlap the, the clock. So uh, if you, you know, just remove them in the circle, you're going to still have part of their claws you're going to have part of their body and their wings and everything. Uh, so uh, you're going to have their their feet here. So you really wouldn't be able to remove that. Now, I could clip uh, basically, let's say that I had, you know, this vector here. And I'm going to right click on the model. You see how it's, uh, you know, here. Uh, I'm going to right click on it and go to the object properties, the models properties. And I'm going to turn the fading off so I can see the actual grayscale. And then I'm going to take my circle and I'm just going to surround the clock here. Uh, just the numbers and everything. Uh, let's see. Pretty much right about there and I could take that uh, and on my layer if I have that selected along with the model I could turn on if I'm in vCard Pro I could turn on clipping and um, you know it would only keep whatever areas inside that vector you know uh, so uh, it'll only keep, you know, whatever's inside that vector and get rid of everything else. So clipping is one way to do it. If I'm in desktop or pro, I can clip. If I'm in Vetric Aspire, I have a tool that does the same thing, but I can actually permanently remove it. Okay. So if you notice in the 2D view, you still see the whole model. But in the 3D view, I've gotten rid of, it's only going to carve what's showing here in the 3D view. So Baron, I could clip it, uh, you know, clip away what I don't want and keep what I do. So whatever's inside the vector, it's going to keep. Uh, but if I have Vetric Aspire, then I could do the same thing, but I could actually permanently remove. I don't have to just clip and, you know, it only shows me, you know, what I want. I can just remove those sections uh, and stuff. But um, I couldn't just, you know, if I remove, try to remove the dragons and keep the hole outside, the, all the... Um, uh, Celtic weaving and everything that was on there and stuff. Uh, I wouldn't be able to because the, the dragon's claws and everything, I wouldn't be able to really remove those out and stuff. I could spend hours on it trying to sculpt and 
and change it, uh, you know, remove what I can. Uh, but I would require a spire to do some sculpting, you know, to turn those claws into something different or whatever, right? So, but uh, uh, if I'm in desktop and pro, all I have is the clipping feature, you know, that I can, that I can work with. Uh, so, um, <clears throat> that would be, that would be the, uh, the way that it would go, right? Okay. And so, uh, in the box creator gadget, uh, what does, uh, the allowance actually allow for? Is it the fit between the fingers, uh, when you, uh, you know, use square tabs? So in the box creator, not the finger joint creator, but in the box creator, uh, you're asking about, and, um, let's see here. Okay, I don't have the box creator, so let's go get it. So I'm gonna install a new gadget. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm actually gonna, I gotta go get it first. So let's go to about gadgets. Uh, click on this link down here. Um, I'll just copy it because it wants to open up an explorer. Uh, all right, control C. Let's go to Google, the googly, and control V. All right, let's go drawing. Uh, no, it's not drawing, it is toolpath box creator all right in the box creator let's download the gadget so we're going to download it first okay uh, let's open it up uh, I don't want to do that agree install wonderful okay Let's close out of that now, close out of that, and close out of that. All right, I should now um, be able to uh, go back into Vetric, always restart it. Should have to restart it. Uh, let's go 10 by 10, that's good. Gadgets and the box creator should be in my list now, there it is. Okay, so in the uh, box creator, we have our geometry options, you know, the width, depth, height, the joint width, and the question you're asking for is the allowance, okay? This is gonna be pretty much the fit, okay? Um, the, the fit between the kind of the, the fingers. Uh, I don't want to really call it the overcut. Uh, I don't know if that's the right term and everything, but um, it's basically instead of them being the same, you know, where I have to kind of beat this together, I might do, you know, a uh, point oh oh five, you know, five thousandths of an inch allowance or something. Uh, let's. Um, I'm just gonna go ten by ten by ten. Just a square box here. Uh, the joint width, I'll go uh, a half inch. And the allowance, I'll go 0 0.005. Uh, let's see here. Make the lid, make the bottom, make side one, two, make in one and one, two. Let's select our tool. For the tool, I'll use an eighth inch end mill. And the joint type, oh, okay, so, um, 
it crashed. All right, interesting enough. Let's go back in and see. Do, 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 do. Um, you know, gadgets are made by users and um, that one had a little bit of a crash to it. So let's try this again. Let's go 10 by 10 by 10. Joint width, I'm gonna go 0 0.5 and allowance 0 0.005. Uh, make all those, let's, uh, I'll do square tabs. No button handler found in script. Okay. Yeah, so it keeps crashing. There's a, there's a, there's a problem with the box creator uh, for some reason. Let's uh, see if I can go into the downloads. Let's see if it's something to do with the download. Um, let me go back up here. And. Actually, uh, C drive, users, public, public documents, Vetric files, gadgets, VCAR Pro 11, box creator, and uh, Okay, so something in the code is I'm not gonna I'm not gonna waste time doing this guys, but uh, something in the code is not defined, causing it to crash, um, and uh, so let's see what. Let's see what we get here. 10, 10, 10, 0 0.5, 0 So it didn't crash uh, outside of Vetric. Let's go one more time and then we're gonna move on guys and we'll have to, you know, we'll have to uh, answer that question another day. Uh, but let's, uh, one more time, we'll give it a go. If it crashes again, then we gotta move on. Um, but the allowance is the overcut, you know, how the parts fit together. Uh, you know, that's the answer to the question, but Let's try it again. Uh, this time I'm gonna, on the box guide, I'm gonna change my numbers up. Uh, I'm actually just gonna use the default numbers uh, that they got going on here. And something in the handler, the tool selector Uh, okay and there we go it crashed again all right unfortunately I can't answer that question uh, there's an issue with the box uh, you know creator uh, make your own finger joints in your boxes and stuff and use your fillet tool and all that uh, if yours crashes uh, don't not make a box just because the box creator gadget isn't working for you uh, make your own box and um, let's see here. Let's back it up some.
Laney, can you talk about the diamond drag bit and how to set it up in Vetcher Correct Depths and everything? Okay. Uh, now, our diamond drag bit is spring loaded. So I can't, you know, I, I, uh, I'll try to my best to speak in general terms, but uh, ours is spring loaded. Um, you would generally use the quick engraving toolpath and. Um, uh, the, for us, uh, the diamond drag bit is a 90 degree angle, uh, eighth inch diameter tip with a 0.02 line, uh, width and everything. Um, feed rate, you can go as fast or as slow as you want, uh, and everything. I've got mine set for hundred inches a minute with a plunge of 30. Um, the bit, is not going to be running the router is not going to be running so your spindle speed if your software controls your spindle speed make it zero uh, or set up a different profile altogether for diamond drag so your spindle or router doesn't come on uh, if you have a router just shut the router off uh, unless you really need to dig in you know uh, then you have the router going and all but usually if you're dragging you don't um, so the depth of pressure normally in the toolpath here, I set it to zero. Uh, the depth of pressure is how much pressure, you know, that we're putting on that spring loaded bit, uh, how much pressure, you know, we're putting on that diamond bit. And um, on our diamond bit, I set the pressure when I set the Z zero position at the machine. Uh, I bring that bit down and retract that spring up about a quarter of its fully retractable distance. Uh, and that's the pressure that I want on it and I zero it out and for my cut here I'm running a zero depth of pressure. So it runs that depth of pressure, right? Um, and then I decide if I'm doing an outline or a fill if I'm doing a fill uh, I'm gonna be most likely doing a hatch at a 45 degree angle and You know, whatever it may be um, You know, we would calculate that toolpath uh, and uh, the diamond drag bit, you know, just drags. Uh, the there is a decent little video on uh, the Digital Woodcarver YouTube channel on using the drag bit, diamond drag bit, a discussion, an hour long discussion between Burl and I on it and everything. But uh, uh, if you're using a diamond bit that is not spring loaded, then you're gonna set how much depth of pressure. So how much pressure are we putting on this bit for it to engrave in? Because it's not cutting in, you know, it's it's in scratching, it's engraving, right? So how much down pressure do we need to put on it? Is it a few thousands, you know, or this or that? Uh, for me, ours are spring loaded, so we set the spring retraction and the pressure when we zero out the machine and we run a zero pressure depth. So, um, but as far as the tool um, itself, uh, you know, our particular bit tips are 90 degree, eighth inch diameter bits. Uh, they have a line width of 0.02. Um, again, you can, you know, your speeds can be 35 inches a minute, 65, 75, whatever. You know, whatever's gonna work best for you. Uh, I'm running, you know, at a, uh, you know, 100 inches a minute uh, feed rate with a 30 inch a minute plunge. And, um, you know, I always do a 45. For me, I don't know why. I'm such a, oh, I'm a creature of habit, you know. Um, there are certain carvings, like when I'm laser engraving and stuff, um, you know, I might go with a zero angle. Uh, sometimes I go with a 45, but with my with my diamond bit, I'm always at a 45 degree angle. Uh, I don't really vary off that. I don't know why. I have no reason. There's no rhyme reason like, oh, this is better than that. Um, I just think that it kind of conceals the lines a little bit better, you know, the engraving lines and stuff. When especially when you have a big fill area, you know, let's say I'm doing a big letter or something with the lines being at a 45 degree angle, my eyes, you know, when I'm looking at it, it's not catching as if they were straight up and down or across, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, all right, Jeff, good. So Jeff got his uh, box created to work uh, and uh, awesome. There you go, man, good for you. Uh, and uh, uh, that's good to know. So it's something within 
my software, right? We'll just call it on, on my end somewhere. Uh, let's see here. Do you use the six watt laser or something higher? Rod, Roddy Probert, I use the six watt laser. I, I have a 50 watt laser I use as well, but uh, for the most part, I use the six watt laser. Uh, and um, um, the laser module tools, uh, you know, laser cut and fill or laser picture. So the six watt laser. Um, after the user group meeting in Indiana, uh, one of our users, John, uh, showed some amazing, amazing laser work uh, and carvings and stuff. And he gave me some insight on some settings and stuff for my big 50 watt laser and all. Uh, and, um, and said that it may, some of the things may that he did might be possible with the 6 watt. I haven't experimented with that yet, so I'm not even going to you know, kind of talk or try to explain it. But man, he had some nice, almost three-dimensional looking laser cuts with his larger laser. Uh, and uh, he gave me some of the settings and all to play around with that I didn't think were even possible to do. But uh, as soon as he showed, it was a show and tell that we had. As soon as he showed that, uh, I was amazed. And um, I'm like, oh, I'm going to try that. And I just haven't yet, and I want to. I need to. Um, and if I learn that technique, if I can get it, practice with it a little bit, then I'll teach it. Uh, as long as I know it, I'll teach it. But I don't know, you know, um, I just know basic, you know, photo engraving and stuff like that. Uh, but that three-dimensional engraving that he did was phenomenal. Uh, I wish I had some samples to show you, but um, it was really good stuff uh, at the user group meeting and, uh, and everything. Um, all right, let's see here. Bum, 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 bum. Are inlays processed the same way on a radius or rotary surfaces as they are on flat surfaces? Yeah, David, uh, so, uh, you know, if you're doing an inlay, let's say on a pool cue, you know, that you're making like, you know, like a, 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 a billiard cue, a pool stick, uh, you know, the handle and stuff, um, your inlay, let's say you're doing, you know, an inlay, you know, on that round, uh, it's going to be, you know, uh, processed the same way as if it would be on a flat. Um the uh, depth and everything. I mean, the uh, y-axis, if you will, just you're thinking about wrapping, right? So uh, if I have an inlay that's flat, right, and, I, and I'm wrapping it around 380 degrees, 360 degrees, I don't know where 380 came from, 360 degrees around, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm literally just wrapping around. And that's what the project does. You know, it wraps it around that whatever your rotary axis is if you're doing a fourth axis thing. So, yeah, it does. It does. It calculates it the same way. Processes it the same way. Um, I, on small spindle type projects like that, I personally, I do kind of like a V-carve inlay process versus a standard inlay because I don't have really small diameter bits and everything and I want to get as much and something like that that's you know going to be inlaid on something round I want as much you know detail as possible kind of deal but uh, yeah it, it processes it the same way it just it's wrapping it I don't know if that's uh, a good enough explanation for you but it's it, it processes it the same way yes um Let's see here. Speaking of the six watt laser, uh, does it only work with the digital wood carving machines? Uh, yeah, uh, I mean it's an op laser. It could probably be set up with other machines. We wouldn't support it, so uh, we would recommend uh, if you have a different machine, uh, just purchase the laser from directly from op laser. Uh, the six watt digital laser is sold to mount on one of our units uh, and supported to mount on one of our units. We wouldn't support it on another unit. So just go straight to opt laser on that. Uh, Kool-Aid, Kool-Aid. Um, 
Did it crash due to material due to material thickness? That's a very good possibility because uh, I did leave that one and a half inch thickness in there. Uh, let's go back to uh, one. We'll give it one more go. Um, we'll set up the board right. So create a new file. I'll bring this down to a quarter inch thick. Uh, I'm going to go a half inch thick, 0 0.5. Half inch thick, 10 by 10. Uh, reference off the material surface. Start at the bottom left corner. Uh, click OK. Gadgets. Box creator. 10. 10. 10. Uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.005, make all of those for the tool, eighth inch end mill, nope, and it crashed, okay, so I'm not sure uh, <clears throat> what's causing it to crash, but I'll address it later, uh, Let's see here. Mm -mm -mm. Version 1.3 works. I don't know what version I actually downloaded. Uh, ah, let's download here. Let's download it a different and install it a different way. Um, let me see here. Let's download and let's download it and install it a different way. So, uh, Vetric Oh, that's the development info. I don't want that. Sorry, guys. Uh, gadget. Go, go, gadget legs. Okay, box creator. All right, let's come down here to the bottom. Previous versions. Let's see here. This is V11, right? V11 box creator. Let's see previous versions. Just out of curiosity. Okay, and um, I just because I downloaded it does it mean or installed it doesn't mean it installed in the correct place so let me go take a look uh, users public public documents uh, vetric files gadgets let me go into version 10 which I downloaded and make sure that it's not in there that's great it's not uh, 10 point Five. Let's make sure it's not in there. That's good. Let's go to Aspire 10. Make sure it's not in there. Wonderful. And VCarve 11, Box Creator. So, uh, 8.02 p.m. It's 8.24. That was not the file. Um, ba -ba -ba -bum. 8.02 was what we did earlier. So... I wonder where it installed it. Let's go to downloads. Let me see which folder it put it in. Uh, agree. Okay, it's saying that it's got it. So what I'll do is Let's close out of this. 
let's see if it overwrote that other one, that other version, and let's see if it fixed itself. Uh, click OK. I'm going to go with a half inch piece of material. We'll use the box creator. And uh, I'm, I'm still going to stick with the 10 by 10. It's got to work. Uh, 0 0.5. And um, I'm going to go with, uh, let's go with a one inch joint width. I'll change that up. 0, 0.0, I'll go 10 thousandths, just something different. Tool is going to be an eighth inch end mill for me on this one. And I want, there we go. Nope. So, uh, yeah, I have no clue, guys. So we're not going to, I'm not going to revisit that one again. <laughs> so you want me to teach you how to draw a box? Uh, I could do that. Um, let's see here. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, your spoil board should be in good shape too uh, to get good results when using the drag bit, especially uh, doing glass. Yeah, I mean, Todd, that's a good point and stuff. Um, uh, you know, I haven't used, now I've used the drag bit on uh, glass mirror uh, and glass. I've used the drag bit on um Aluminum painted aluminum like you know little name tags and stuff uh, like uh, and, uh, and brass as well to uh, Painted brass. I have not used the drag bit on a edge lit acrylic sign a lot of people do that That's a good. That's a good one um, But yeah, I mean a flat surface is critical right uh, with anything, you know, it's critical uh, and uh, Let's see here um, let me think here. How large of a laser does it take to cut through eighth inch basswood? Okay. Um, I have a customer that can do multiple passes with a six watt laser to cut through uh, eighth inch uh, balsa. Slash, I guess that would be bath wood, balsa wood. Um, but uh, honestly, I would say you know at least forty uh, for me uh, to just a clean, nice, clean cut, not a lot of deep burning on the edges and stuff. At least forty watts or more. At least forty watts or more. Um, Any recommendation on V carving oak quarter inch letter uh, height and preventing chip out? Um, yes. So uh, oak is an open grain, open pour grain. So the more narrow your walls and everything are in, the, in your letters, you know, the smaller they are and everything, the more chance of chip out you're going to get. Um, so you, uh, I'm assuming that you're referring, because if you're V carving and stuff, not too bad, but I'm assuming you're talking about ra a raised V carving where, uh, because you said a quarter inch letter height. So um, I'm assuming you're talking about letter height. Uh, in that case, uh, the wider the angle bit, uh, the better stability, the better base or foundation it's going to have on it. Uh, for less chip out and everything. So I would not carve that with anything less than a 90 degree V bit. Personally, I don't carve on oak period because of the open grain. Uh, I build furniture out of oak and everything, but I don't carve it. I don't like carving it. Um, and also, uh, but um, if I was doing, if I was doing an oak sign, raised letters and stuff, uh, I would, you know, it would be a 90 degree V bit. So I have a nice foundation. Uh, the narrower my foundation is, the more chance I have for that open grain pour to, you know, chip or break out or anything. Uh, so I, I would be a 90 degree V bit or more. So, 
um, and stuff. And uh, Todd, if you're um, if you're talking about an actual V carve, where it's carving in and everything, uh, change up your uh, again, yeah. I mean, a quarter inch deep cut, uh, 90 degree V bit is what I would use on it for sure. Uh, the narrower 60s or 22s and everything is going to give you more chance of a smaller well, a smaller, you know, uh, a narrower well and everything. It could cause chipping. Uh, you can reduce your pass depth instead of going, uh, you know, 0.2 in the pass if you're talking about that. And tell me, help me out here. Are you talking about raised letters or are you talking about just V carving them in? Uh, because you know the answer might vary slightly between the two but uh, if it was raised letters 90 degree V bit I wouldn't use a 60 or a 22 on that uh, on oak I, I love 60 60 is my go-to 22 is my go-to when I'm doing very small fine stuff and everything uh, but not on oak um, the uh, but as far as V carving and everything um, you could uh, try changing your cut direction uh, instead of a climb to a conventional cut and possibly reduce your pass depth and everything to help avoid that chip out and everything. That would be kind of my answer to that one. Okay. Um, Tom says, 4 okay. I can't remember, but I think think if you do conventional cutting instead of uh, climb cutting, it may make a difference. You want to try it. So that, yeah, there you go. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate that. Uh, Todd, uh, for oak. Oh, for oak. <laughs> I was wondering what for oak was. For oak, yes. Uh, yeah, so a, uh, a conventional cut versus a uh, climb cut is, is uh, I, that's, that's a good, that's exactly what I was talking about, Tom, and I, I appreciate you reiterating that. That's a good, that would be a good one to try. Uh, but now, just a standard V carve height uh, letter of a letter is a quarter of an inch. So I'm assuming the letter is a quarter inch tall. Because if you're talking about depth and all, it automatically calculates its depth based on the space between the lines and the angle of the V-bit. So um, there's nothing standardized about that. Uh, in Depending on the size of the letter and all, if, I mean, if it's always the same size and you're getting a quarter inch depth of cut, then that's one thing. Uh, but uh, uh, do, it, do it, try it as a climb cut instead of a conventional, or, or, or I'm sorry, a conventional cut instead of a climb, sorry. Uh, and, um, uh, reduce your pass depth. Maybe it might be a little bit too aggressive and it's just taking out. Uh, that would be the only two suggestions I would have on that one. Okay. So, that's that. All right. Now, really quickly to get back to this, uh, I want to um, get rid of this quick engraving. I want to do my finish cut here. Now, on my finish cut, we talked about it a moment ago. I said, you know, you know, with this uh, detail and finish and everything, uh, we're going to do a uh, 16th and probably a 32nd to, you know, get as much detail as I can and, and also try to clean up some of the uncleanliness. Uh, so I'm going to use my uh, 16th inch end mill uh, tapered ball nose for the first tool and then I'm going to use my let me find it let me find eight sixteen don't I have my thirty second I gotta go through and really clean up my uh, tool database. Okay, we're gonna add it in since it's not in here. Uh, let's go 
add new tool. Um, it's going to have a diameter of a quarter of an inch. It is a three flute. Um, it is a tapered ball nose. <clears throat> it is a 5.4 degree um, 0 0.3125 divided by 2 equals 3 flute. Eight percent step over, fifteen clearance. Uh, this is going to spin at fifteen thousand RPMs. Uh, we're going to go forty-five and fifteen. So, okay. Let me check on that angle real quick just to make sure that is the correct angle. Um, let's see. Uh, Thirty-two tapered. Come on now, we ain't waiting all day. Where are you at, right there? One thirty-two. It is a six point two degree. Six point two degree. I knew it was. Off there. All right. So click apply. Okay. Add that in, and we're gonna calculate. You're gonna use the selected vector as the boundary again. I am going to um, do a one thousand. Yeah, one thousand is good. Uh, raster cut and calculate. Okay. We'll let that calculate. While that's calculating, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to uh, um, there you go. Camara's uh, throwing out some tips for you too, Todd. Uh, higher RPM or uh, slower IPM inches per minute. Your feed rate, cool beans. All right. So while that's calculating. What else do we have? Let me see here. I'm really puzzled as to why my box maker gadget isn't uh, working. And uh, it's killing me, killing me softly. Um, the, uh, you know, on your, on your boxes, you know, lay out your different sheets and stuff. Um, and let's say that, uh, let me draw this here. Okay. And I'm going to draw a rectangle that's going to basically, for me, kind of uh, represent uh, my joint. And basically, the main size of this rectangle is, uh, if I'm using half inch wood, it needs to be a half inch uh, in height, uh, 0 0.5. And I want, uh, as we talked about a moment ago, about a one inch, you know, uh, joint there. And um, I'm going to, let's start actually kind of down here. Okay. And let's get that right here. Now, on this, uh, now that I have that laid out, I can pull this out because I want it to kind of clear this edge just a little bit. 
uh, and everything. And this would be, for me, uh, this would be kind of the female cuts, if you will. But um, one of the uh, things that, uh, you know, I can do is let's say that I want, you know, five fingers across um, and of course hold your control key down, five, doesn't matter really where they are. And if I select those five fingers there, I hold down my shift key, um, actually, hold on a second, hold on, let me get back to here, there we go. All right, now let me copy these over. Okay, so if I select these and I select my rectangle last here, okay, um, I can use my spacing and everything. So uh, I definitely want them all on the bottom and I definitely want them spaced horizontally, you know, to create those fingers and all. Uh, and I want those uh, mirrored to the other side um, so I can uh, flip oops wrong direction I can flip them vertically to the other side there and then I can take both of these uh, controls uh, let me turn off the border here uh, control C control V and then I can hit the number nine key on my keyboard uh, to get those other sides right um, and uh, so now I've got my this box that's going to fit together and all I've got my two sides now you know I need to uh, I would just cut this twice and then my tops and bottoms would be opposite of this right so they would be opposite you know you'd have your you know your fingers and your pins and your tails and stuff but um, you know uh, the one thing that would be important, let's go here again. Uh, I would take and just so it gets a nice clean cut, kind of extend that out. And I would do the same, you know, for all here. Doesn't have to go out too far. Don't be too crazy about it. And then our fillets. Out, which the box creator I think would make the fillets and all that stuff for you too unless that's the fillet gadget I'm not sure but um, you know on the fillets uh, it would be a dog bone fillet uh, I'd be using an eighth inch bit for uh, cutting this out so a sixteenth of an inch radius and um, the uh, you know I would just have to go through and add those fillets in all the way around. Now, I could have added those fillets in on my first row before I did all my mirroring, copying, and pasting, right? I could have done that uh, to get so I didn't have to go back and click all these individually. Um, but yeah, as far as, uh, you know, um, it uh, taking, you know, too long to draw out and things like that, I can completely relate. Uh, but now what I'm going to do is, um, give me just a second here. I'll complete this around. Let's finish up these last one, two, three, and done, done. Okay, now, now I need to basically create the opposite of this uh, and everything the kind of uh, the females to the males if you will um, and so my fingers are you know are if I had let's see this joint here this this and that's way too big mm. 
All right, this is not to scale, but uh, your pins and your tails. So let's call this the uh, pin board. I think I think that would be considered the pin board, wouldn't it? I'm not sure. Uh, but uh, I, you know, I've got my left and right side. Now my top and bottom. You know, would have to go in, and then the uh, the the two ends, if you will, right? The two ends and stuff. Um, and so here, basically these joints, okay, uh, let's see what my, spacing is there. And it would be the same here. If I hold down the control key and snap that to there, yeah, they should all fit. Wonderful. All right, so now if I measure, um, and I could, I should have drawn this. I'd always do it at the bottom. Uh, let me do it down here. So. Draw that there. Now, these are one inch, right? Uh, and they're you know they're they're one inch uh, wide. So my spacing on this, I mean, I could come in here uh, on my array tool, uh, and it's just going to be one row. Uh, there's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six uh, columns, and they're going to be spaced apart one inch and zero, uh, and that's gonna be the gap from the left side to the right side to create those, right? And um, and everything, because that's, that's what's gotta get cut off and everything like that. Uh, once again, I could, uh, you know, pull that out just a little bit. And with those selected, um, I'll group them together this time, but I can mirror that, flip that horizontal, not horizontal, Laney. Vertical. Uh, select that group and this group. Control C, Control V to copy and paste, and then the number zero key on my keyboard to rotate it 90 degrees. And now I've created the vectors, and I could do my little fillets and all, but I've created the vectors for the tail, the cut, the pocket cuts, and all for the tails and all. It's not that bad to draw out. I mean, the box creator, yeah, it works great, right? It, it does it all for you. It does all that thinking and everything. But uh, sometimes you just got to go in there and manually do it, right? So, um, uh, but uh, it wouldn't be too hard to, uh, you know, lay out. And, of course, you would do it in separate sheets, right? So now that I have, you know, uh, these groups, uh, one, two, three, four, um, they would get, uh, create a new sheet and they would get, uh, moved over to that sheet, right? So, uh, you have your pins and your tail pockets and stuff. Now these corner, uh, pieces here, they'll get, uh, that'll get, um, Pocketed away, so let's create the tool path so you can see what's happening here. Ba -ba -bum -bum. Um, and you could do this almost as a profile cut where those ends were cut off and it actually, the bit came in and cut in around, cut in around and cut in around instead of pocketing, right? You know, pocketing this and then this and then this and then this. You could do it as a full profile cut. And that would look like this if I welded Welded that to oh weld's not gonna work for me. Um, weld it keeps the outside stuff, not the inside stuff, but that's okay. I can you know uh, just trim it away, right? So few extra clicks, few extra clicks. It's not gonna not the end of the world, but um, this way we can do it as a profile toolpath um, and everything. 
All right, let's see here. That black line throws me off because I can't tell if I, what I cut, what I didn't. And once it's all kind of grouped together, all right, let me see if I, yeah. So if I take and move this over here so you can see it, so that's kind of the profile, the profile you created, right? And so, you know, this part, when, when it gets cut out, this part is going to be, you know, for the lid sticking out. So, you know, this part here gets removed, right? These get removed. So on this one, on sheet two and three, uh, let's see here, go back here and make that active. On this one, these two uh, vectors, let's ungroup everything. But these two graph vectors, uh, let's create my rectangle boundary. And let's center that boundary on the board. Okay. So again, scissors, uh, trim, 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 trim. Trim, trim, tree. Okay. And of course, hold on a second. I'm not centered on the board. Align. Center. There we go, Junior. All right. So, you know, just come in and create that. Uh, Female cut, and then of course we would do our fillets on this one as well, all the way around. And uh, you know, Bob's your uncle, right? So now you've got your top, bottom, and your two sides, and um, uh, and everything. So it uh, you know, from there it's just a matter of creating the ends, right? And I think one of these would actually count for the end. Uh, I think it would be the same the same fit I don't know somebody correct me if I'm wrong on that but like you said it takes too long to draw uh, and uh, you know the box creator is just a click of a button in the math when it's all working properly but I'm not gonna let something stop me if it's not working properly I'm gonna do what I gotta do to get what I gotta get done and uh, and also right so uh, now you kind of have a little bit of an idea on how to do that. Um, the uh, okay, so once that's done, you know, then we have um, trim that away. There we go. All right, we're missing a vector. Trim that away. All right, this line and this line, we got to join that with a straight line because I trimmed it by accident right there. All right, so now we have, oh, and this line's got to be trimmed away. I missed a couple. Okay, golden. So this one is, you know, the uh, female to that, right, to that male. And we would do our, you know, our little fillet radiuses and all that good stuff. So you guys get that? Y'all get it, right? Good. Um, and uh, it's all on the inside corners, okay? So your inside corners, uh, put your, uh, your fillets and all. Because you can't fit a square peg in a round hole, Okay. And here's a really quickly pair of scissors and trim. Oh, won't do that. Oh, 
All right, so that one's not going to let me trim uh, properly without deleting the uh, part out. So I'm going to go into node editing mode and I'm going to delete this span. Okay, uh, I'm going to come in here and join this back with a straight line. All right, and then I'm going to delete that little piece right there. Okay, no big deal. All right, so rock this out all the way around. And I think the box creator already does the fillets uh, for you and everything. It automatically kind of fills all that in. So again, this is, if you got your box creator working properly and all, this is kind of all mute, but it's nice to know. I have a backup plan. Okay. And we should be right there. Okay. All right. So those are done. And so basically when these um, parts uh, go together, go together. It's not going to let me. Is it going to, it's not going to let me drag it over there. Come on, man. Um, no, it's not going to let me drag it over there. All right, let's move that over real quick. Move to sheet one. There you go. Let's make sheet one active. Now let me move it over there. Cool beans. All right. And so let's get that lined up. Got to remember, it's laying down like this, not like that, right? So, but um, uh, you got your left and right and your top and bottom and all that good stuff. All right, guys. All right. So I don't see any more questions rolling in unless the chat froze up or something because it stopped moving, uh, which means uh, we are going to wrap this up in the next uh, three minutes. So um, uh, if you have any questions, now's the time to ask them. Other than that, we are going to say goodnight, and uh, we will uh, pick this up again next week, or we'll, we'll do a project next week, or what have you. Uh, remember, the bee, Beehive uh, files and all, uh, sometime this weekend, they'll be on that uh, available for download. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work on those uh, this weekend. And also, I just got... A bunch of new magnets in uh, my magnets and stuff and if a long time ago long time ago not a long time ago months back months back let's say that uh, we did a Scrabble board a big Scrabble board and everything and uh, uh, I was supposed to put those files out uh, a big magnetic kind of like hang on the wall Scrabble board right I was supposed to put those files out uh, and I didn't um, but I've got my new magnets in and everything. I want to, uh, I'm going to be, a, uh, working with that project this weekend as well too, to see, uh, you know, get all the fine tunings and stuff and I'll make that file available as well. Uh, so, um, the, the big, I don't know if you remember it, but the big, uh, wall Scrabble unit and everything, I finally got the magnets in and, uh, um, uh, we're going to, uh, I'm going to make it. I want to see, I want to make sure that, you know, everything holds up nicely, you know, that, uh, you know, that things stick how they're supposed to stick and all that good stuff. Uh, I want to get depths, uh, you know, for, you know, when it's cutting the magnets hole, when it's pocketing out the little magnet holes, uh, I want to get depths based on the magnets I got so I can refer the, those magnets. Um, they're pretty, they're fairly strong little guys. Um, and they're small. Uh, once I work out all the bugs and everything, make sure everything is all good, then I'll make that file available as well. Um, also, all right, I think it was like a game night video that we did uh, where we did a big kind of Scrabble board, magnetic Scrabble board hanging on the wall kind of thing. We'll get that uh, done. Uh, those just came in uh, with my bits and everything. The magnets finally came in. They were out of stock for a while, but uh, we'll get that done. And so those files will be available. All right, everybody. 
hopefully you got something out of tonight. It was just a simple discussion. We didn't really go over a whole lot, answer some questions and stuff. Uh, but um, hopefully it was it was worthwhile, worth your time and hanging out with me. And we'll catch you in the next one. We'll see you next week. Until then, bye.